welcome back I'm Di and today I'm bringing you my March wrap up in March you know I was a co-host for the fourth annual March Mystery Madness Readathon this was a month long of mystery reading so I've got quite a few mystery books to talk to you about today but I also have a couple volumes of manga which I will share with you at the end of my wrap up as you can see I have a change in scenery. Um, I am now working from home and I will get into more about that and why I'm working from home um, at the end of the video as well. So let's just get into the books that I read in March. As always I have my little handy reading tracker here um, so I will share with you what that looks like here. I had greens because it was March. Um, and I'm going to reference this as I go through the list of books that I will be talking to you about today. So the first book I read was Murder on Astor Place. This is the first Gaslight Mystery by Victoria Thompson. This was the book one Cozy's Club pick for the first quarter of 2019. Book one Cozy's Club is a cozy mystery book club that I run in the Mystery Madness Goodreads group and we read first in a series cozy mysteries. Um, so if you'd like to check us out you can find us in the Mystery Madness Goodreads group linked down in the description box below. This one was our first like historical pick and even though it is considered cozy I wouldn't call this like cozy it's not like run-of-the-mill cozy mystery for me this one follows Sarah Brandt and she is a midwife and right after she delivers one of her patients babies she sees a girl that looks very similar to a girl that she used to know in her past. The very next day when she goes to check on her patient to see how she's doing postpartum, she finds out that a girl has been murdered nearby. Suffice it to say, it is the girl that she saw the night before and it does happen to be not the girl that she thought it was but the sister of the girl that she thought um, she had recognized from her past so she having known this uh, family in the past takes it upon herself to see why this girl was murdered as I said this was our first historical mystery for the Cozy's Club I don't really read a lot of historical novels, um, so this was interesting for me, however this story was just okay um, for me. I did not like the investigator, there is an, an official police investigator that gets involved with this case. He is very gruff. There's a part in the story that I think was introduced so that we feel some compassion for him as to why he's the way he is, but I still didn't like his character at all. The mystery itself and its conclusion was very dark. Um, for people who read a lot of cozy mysteries, this one might not sit well with them. The situation in which we find ourselves at the end of this book is quite a difficult one. Um, even for a contemporary novel in this day and age, I think there would be some shock factor as to the reasoning for the murder. Um, in the end, like I said, it was just okay for me. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with this one 
This series, even though I own quite a few books in this series, I don't actually have the next one. And I'm not super excited to jump into it um, at this point. So I might just let this series stew for a little bit and see how I feel if I want to pick up the next one in the future. Um, going back to what I was saying about the investigator, with cozies you tend to have some kind of relationship between the official like police detective or the investigator and the amateur sleuth. I'm kind of hoping that doesn't happen in this one, uh, just because I disliked him so much. But yeah, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with this one, but I guess I've, I'll find out if and when I do decide to. The next book I read was The Titanic Locket. This is the first book in the Haunted Museum series by Suzanne Wen. This is a middle grade um, mystery about the Titanic. Um, in this one you have two sisters. One is Samantha and her sister is Jessica and their parents have booked a cruise on the maiden voyage of the Titanic 2. So it is a replica of the Titanic and it is following Titanic's maiden voyage. And so while they are waiting to board the Titanic 2, Jessica and Samantha decide to visit uh, this museum nearby. And in the museum there is a small exhibit on Titanic artifacts. And they become particularly enthralled in this particular locket. Jessica decides that she's just going to pick up the locket and take a better look at it and as they're trying to get it open a guard comes by and they freak out because they're not supposed to be touching the artifacts but Jessica can't get the locket out of her hand it seems to be stuck and while her and her sister are struggling to get it open Samantha finally just slaps Jessica's hand and the locket falls back into place on the exhibit. Needless to say, they're freaked out a little bit and they head out to go meet their parents so that they can board the ship. But they meet up with their parents and get on the ship. And things are pretty strange on the ship. It seems like they are they not only recreated the ship, but some of the people on board are in character so you've got people that were actually passengers on um, the Titanic being portrayed and the two girls and their parents go to the room that they had booked and apparently there was a booking error but they have upgraded their parents into a like first class suite but the girls have to stay in uh, like a I think it's a third class room by themselves and strange things start to happen to them their room number seems to keep changing they start seeing like an apparition and the locket that they thought they left at the museum turns up in their room. So I don't read too many middle grade books or children's books for that matter, uh, but I really enjoyed this one. The whole reason why I picked this one up was because I'm very interested in the Titanic. I enjoy watching documentaries on it, or the movie, or the TV series or the TV movies. <laughs> I really enjoy learning about the Titanic and you know seeing what it was like to be on a grand ship like that. Not that I've been on a cruise in my lifetime. Uh, but it was just it's just such an interesting thing even though it was such a terrible disaster. This story for a middle grade book 
was pretty creepy. <laughs> I read it really quickly. It was very entertaining. But I was very surprised at how creepy and scary at times the story was. I'm very interested to see what the other, I think there's three other books in this series um, about different things in history, what those books are like. And yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I definitely recommend it, especially if you're interested in the Titanic. The next book I read was Curious Minds by Janet Ivanovich and Fef Sutton. This is the first book in the Night and Moon mystery series. This one follows Riley Moon and she is a junior analyst at the Blaine Grunwald Bank. And one of their clients is Emerson Knight and he is a very wealthy but eccentric businessman. Riley gets assigned to kind of be the liaison between the bank and Emerson Knight. She goes to visit Emerson and the first thing he wants to see is his gold. Well, Riley is flabbergasted at this request, but she goes back to her um, supervisors and they're like, well, just tell him he can't see it, you know? And between trying to please their supervisors and their customer, it kind of comes to their attention that Emerson Knight's goal is not in the bank. And not only that, there are other very curious things going on, not only with Emerson's gold, but other things in the bank. So Emerson enlists Riley to kind of help him figure out where his gold is. This was a very light mystery. Um, I did enjoy it. There were several action-packed moments. I do enjoy Janet Ivanovich's writing style. I think it's very easy to get into. Emerson was very eccentric and there were... and in his eccentricities he's kind of hilarious at times and Riley's kind of very... I'm not sure how to put it. She plays off of him very well and I think they make great investigative partners. Um, I am interested in continuing with this series and like I said it was a very easy read and yeah I really enjoyed this one. The next book I read was The 39 Clues Double Cross Volume 1 which was the Titanic mission again with Titanic. I borrowed um, this one from the library and I don't have it anymore so I'll pop a picture up here for you to see. This one follows the new leader of the Cahill family and he's like a teenager and someone else from the family who decides to remain unnamed um, has issued a challenge because he doesn't think that the new head of the Cahill family should be a teenage boy. So he basically says, figure out this riddle, and if you don't, a lot of innocent bystanders are going to die. It basically turns this challenge into a adults versus kids challenge within the family. It not only is a challenge between this unnamed person from the family and the new head of the Cahill family, but the adults start to feel like, why are we being led by a child? And the children are feeling kind of the need to prove themselves. And so within the clues of the, of the riddle, they kind of figure out it has something to do with the Titanic sinking. Just so happens that there is a, and here we, <laughs> we're going to tie into my other book, 
there is a launch of a Titanic 2 <laughs> having its maiden voyage. And so obviously they believe that it has something to do with recreating the disaster. That's what the unnamed family member is trying to have happen. And so these kids are trying to prevent that from happening, or so they think. I did enjoy this one not as much as I enjoyed the Titanic Locket. I haven't read any of the other 39 Clues books. Um, and within this one, because it's a spin-off series, I did feel like I missed out on stuff. There were several mentions um, in regards to characters that had appeared in the previous series. Um, and some that became main characters in this book were also from the previous series. So I did feel like I missed out on stuff, even though this is the first book in a new series. Um, I don't normally read books out of series order, but I thought since this was kind of a spin-off, I'd be okay. And to a point I was. Um, but that constant like reminder that there were these characters they were talking about from the previous series made me wonder like what happened in the previous series. And so though I did enjoy this book, there was still a little bit of a nagging feel wanting me to go back and maybe see if I missed out on something. Um, I do want to read more in this series and I am definitely interested in seeing what the regular 39 Clues series is all about. Um, but yeah, I thought it was enjoyable. Again, another middle grade book. And yeah, I definitely recommend it if you're into middle grade mystery adventure type books. The next book I read was Kilt Dead. This is the first book in the Liz McCrimmon mystery series by Caitlin Dunnett. This was Book One Cozy's Club pick for March Mystery Madness. I did pick one specifically um, to read during March. In this one, Liz McCrimmon is a professional Scottish dancer, but during her latest stage show, she gets injured pretty badly, kind of ends her career. And her aunt, um, back in her hometown, runs a like Scottish knickknack shop and she asks for Liz to come and help her run the shop uh, while she takes a trip to Scotland for business purposes. While Liz is running the shop for her aunt there is like a Scottish fair um, in her town and her aunt usually sets up like a tent or a booth at the fair to sell some of the items that uh, they carry in the store and and when Liz comes back from her first day at the fair she goes into the shop and finds a dead body in the back storage area. I was kind of disappointed in this one to be honest with you. I did not enjoy Liz's voice, I guess you would say. Like, I, she didn't read well for me. I didn't enjoy her character. She's very standoffish, I think. She complains quite a bit about not being able to dance anymore, which I thought was kind of childish. This book kind of introduces an old acquaintance um, in her life and he kind of helps her get through this situation about of finding a dead body in her aunt's um, storeroom. But I just didn't understand like they were supposed to have like known each other back in high school and but they didn't really talk to each other back in high school but yet I don't know without I'm gonna give too much away if I say anymore but I just didn't understand 
like that whole back what that whole backstory about them knowing each other before had to do with where they are getting to know each other in the present day I guess I don't know maybe I missed something but I just didn't understand that um, I felt like it took a really long time to get to the mystery element of this the investigator <laughs> again was very brash I didn't like his character at all um, definitely no redeeming qualities that I could see with him there's another character that was introduced in this story that was just as rude <laughs> so right off the bat I've got two characters that I just didn't like plus Liz being the way that she was didn't rub me the right way either so, even though I kind of didn't like all of that, there were things that I did enjoy about this. Um, there are definitely bookish references in this um, story in regards to one of the characters, and I enjoyed those. Um, Scottish dancing bits I enjoyed a lot as well but I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to continue with this series either like I said I was a bit disappointed Liz didn't rub me the right way there are parts of her personality that I just didn't like or how she investigated um, I didn't like that either so yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with this one. I don't actually have any more of the books in this series, but this one was just okay for me. The last book I read from March Mystery Madness was Mary Rose, and this is a standalone um, story by Jeffrey Girard. And this is like a retelling of a J.M. Barry play, which I had found out right before I started reading it. This story follows a girl named Mary Rose Moreland and Simon Blake and they are a couple and Simon decides that it's time for them to take the next step in their relationship. So he decides to take Mary Rose back to her parents and ask for her hand in marriage. Now, Simon and Mary currently reside in the United States, but Mary Rose's parents live in England. And so when they go to visit, Mary Rose hasn't been back in a long time. She doesn't have a great relationship with her parents. And so when Simon goes to ask them for her hand in marriage, they say, before you say anything, if what we think you're going to say is what you're going to say, there's something that you need to know. When Mary Rose was little, we took her on a family vacation and she disappeared for like 33 days. There was no sign of her, nobody knew what happened to her, but miraculously 33 days later, she reappears in the spot that she disappeared from doesn't seem to didn't seem to be injured at all doesn't have any memory of what happened to her in the 33 days before she reappeared initially this doesn't bother Simon very much and him and Mary Rose do eventually get married but this little voice in the back of his head makes him curious about finding out what happened to her and when she disappeared and that's what this story is all about I listened to a good portion of this on audiobook the voice that was used for Mary Rose was a little irritating if I have to be honest um, especially in the way that Mary Rose acted especially around her parents. In front of her parents, Mary Rose, what she wanted was what was going to happen and that was it. There was no 
convincing her out of it. Like, she would just say, they're doing this, and that was it. There was no room for negotiation, um, which I thought was very childish. Um, and Simon just went along with it. Okay, that's what she wants to do. That's what she wants to do, even though they had never discussed doing whatever she had suggested or planned to do. I wouldn't say suggest because it wasn't a suggestion. It, they were going to do what she wanted to do. Um, Mary Rose's mother was a piece of work <laughs> and when you find out what happened to Mary Rose it was kind of a bit confusing to me the whole ending part of this book was confusing and I'm still not quite sure how to take the ending so I guess in a way it was a good mystery because I'm still thinking about what that end meant um, there's a little tidbit tidbit in the back of this book talking about how Alfred Hitchcock was trying to get this story turned into not this this story but J.M. Barry's play turned into a movie that never actually came into fruition uh, but I was more interested to know the basis of J.M. Barry's play, which I did find out in the last few pages of the little snippet that's in the back. I'm not sure if it's called Author's Notes. It's called af The Afterword. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm still thinking about what the end of this book actually meant. Um, I did actually give this to my mom and asked her to read it so that I could discuss the end with her because I kind of need, need that. Like, maybe to see what somebody else thinks of the end of this book. So if you've read this book, please let me know down in the comments below or like private message me on Twitter because I have questions or I need to talk to somebody about the end because I still can't figure out what happened but yeah really enjoyed this one okay so that's all of the books that I read for March Mystery Madness I did read one other novel in the month of March and that was City of Heavenly Fire which is the sixth book in the Mortal Instruments series I'm pretty sure you all know what the Mortal Instruments series is about, so I'm not going to go into it, and I obviously can't say anything about this particular one because it is the last book in this series. But I did buddy read this with my friend Shannon. Her channel is Shannon Riddler. I will link her down in the description box below. We have been reading this series together since City of Glass. Um, we also read The Infernal Devices together, and this was the very last of our buddy reads for this Shadowhunter world. I really enjoyed this series. That's not to say that I didn't have my issues with it. I'm actually really glad that I had Shannon to talk to about this one because I had a lot of issues. Um, not only with Jace and Clary and their relationship, but the timing of certain events. Um, if you've read this, you probably know what I'm talking about, but yeah, I had issues. I kind of feel like this wrapped up too cleanly. Like for those of you who like really clean ends, or final volumes or whatever I think you'd really enjoy the series but I think it was a little bit too clean for my for my tastes um, <laughs> yeah I, like there was a big nice bow put on it and everything was as it should be I guess um, that's not to say it was a bad ending. I did still really enjoy it. 
and with the massive number of pages, <laughs> there was a lot to get to, but at no time did I ever feel like I was bored. So that's good. Um, I do plan on reading further into this world. Um, I know Shannon's not, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break before I continue with other books in this series. Like I said, I really enjoyed what I did read with Shannon. I've enjoyed this world and this series. I am enjoying the TV show, even though it is very different. But yeah, kind of sad that it's over. I really enjoyed my conversations with Shannon. Thanks Shannon for being a great friend and a great buddy reading partner. And I hope we will read something together again in the future. So yeah, this is the last book that I read in the month of March. Then I said there were two volumes of manga that I read during the month. And this was for a new manga book club in real life manga book club that my local Barnes and Noble has started. And we're reading um, first books in series and so the two series that we had read for March were Haikyuu Volume 1. You know that I've been reading this series. It's about an underdog team, an underdog volleyball team who used to be um, at the top. They went to nationals and then now they're not so great. Um, but this is their journey back to the top. This was a reread for me. I am on sh volume 8 now, um, but for the book club I decided to refresh my memory um, with volume 1 and I still really enjoy this. You know that I've consumed this series in anime form a few times, really enjoying the manga series. And yeah, the next book um, that we had, next book, next volume of manga we read for the book, uh, manga club was Kakuryo, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits. Um, this one's by Midori Yuma and arts by Wako Ioka. Character designed by La Ruha. Um, this one follows Aoi and she can see spirits. Her grandfather had passed away, and unbeknownst to her, he had huge debt in the spirit realm, and has kind of sold her to this ogre. He runs um, Kakurio, which is the bed and breakfast for spirits, and he comes to collect. So this first volume is kind of Aoi finding her way in the spirit realm, um, trying to pay back her grandfather's debt without having to marry this ogre. And uh, yeah, I've seen this anime. I really enjoyed the anime. The art style in this volume is a bit different and I also kind of felt like the ogre's character was a bit different. My daughter has also read this one. She tells me no the ogre was like that in the beginning and I don't quite remember but nonetheless I still enjoyed uh, this volume. I do have the second one and the third one is on its way. My mom got them for me for Valentine's Day. And so I'm really excited to experience this story again in uh, this format and I definitely will be continuing to read and collect this series. So yeah, that completes everything that I read in the month of March. Now a little bit of a life update for you. For those of you who are not interested, thank you for joining me and let me know if you read any of these books and I'll see you the next time. But for those of you who are sticking around here a little bit about what's going on and why I have a new setup 
Um, the short story is that we had moved into the new office building and there were issues with the building. I'm not quite sure what those issues are, but they were severe enough that my company has moved us out of that office rather quickly. We had only been there for five months. Um, and the new place that they have picked for us is not ready for us to move in yet. There is a lot of demolition and remodeling that needs to be done. And so we're kind of just waiting until we get the green light to move in. Um, but for now, we are working from home. So... For now, I will be filming in this space. I am told that I will have an office when we move into the new space. However, it won't be ready for two to three months after we move in. So I will probably be filming from this space for a little while. I hope you don't mind. Anyway, that's all that's going on with me as far as life update goes. For those of you who are anxiously awaiting a Yarny update, I am very sorry I haven't had have one up for you recently. I have been dealing with a little bit of, a little bit, quite a bit of pain in my hands and I haven't been able to craft as much as I would like, but I hope to have a Yarny update for you soon. I am working on a few things um, rather slowly and when my hands allow me to. Um, but yeah, that's all that's going on with me. And those are all, all of the books that I read in March. I hope you are all doing great. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.